Notre Dame recruiting fans, thank you for joining me for yet another video here on the channel. My name is Brad Heesby, and I'm going to be breaking down yesterday's Irish Invasion camp. This camp was strictly for 2022, 2023, and 2024 prospects. 2021s have moved on. Yes, I had to say that. I might have gotten asked that in the comments, but a lot of 2023 guys were in attendance, a few 2024s, and then I think maybe only two 2022s, maybe three. Um, notable ones, but I want to start here with the 2024 guys. These guys are young, incoming sophomores. CJ Carr, the guy you're the huddle tape you will about to you will be watching soon here in a second. He's a 2024 guy. Already is a Nebraska Michigan offer. CJ Carr um, threw the ball very well. He's one of two 2024 offers. Notre Dame has offered the same amount of 2023 and 2024 quarterbacks. 2023 Arch Manning and Dante Moore, and then 2024 Julian Sane and C.J. Carr. C.J. Carr is a Michigan legacy. His grandpa um, was Lloyd Carr, former Michigan coach. I don't think Michigan's locked to land him, though. I want to make that clear. Sure, they were his first offer. They do like to offer these guys early, but I wouldn't put too much on that. We'll see what happens. C.J. Carr, though, if Harbaugh doesn't produce, something happens there. I could always see him ending up at Notre Dame. He was very fired up to get this offer. And he wanted it bad. Another 2024 guy to note was Ryan Wingo. He also um, was offered, or he was offered about two weeks ago. He's from St. Louis, Missouri. This kid is going to be a five or high four star, in my opinion. Absolute stud. I've heard that from other analysts as well. Ryan Wingo is talented. Um, I believe he also does some, some track and field speedster. Not sure what he ran in the 40, um, but I'm expecting probably in the four sixes or the high four fives. And he's just a, a freshman going into his sophomore year. So this is impressive. Ryan Wingo is definitely a guy to know. We'll move on to 2022s just because there are two of them I want to talk about. Austin Osbury, um, brother of 2023 five-star Jaden Osbury. Austin is a, is a mid-four-star, according to Rivals, has offers from Bama, LSU, Notre Dame as of, as of recent. Um, the Osbury brother's dad does work for LSU and did play linebacker for the Tigers back in the day. So you need to you need to keep that in your head. But I could see Austin Osbury landing at Notre Dame. Um it really depends what happens with Morrison Moore, Pope, Nawankpa. Um well it really depends on those guys. On the rest of the D B targets on the board, Jaden Bellamy as well is another one of those guys. But hey, if those guys strike out, if Devin Moore goes to Florida or Bama, Pope goes to UNC Nawankpa, Ohio State, Bellamy, Penn State if those guys just continue to fall off the board, I could see Osbury becoming a very top target. I think he's a top target guy, but they just offered. Um, his brother, though, Jaden Osbury, is going to be a top target guy no matter what. This dude is a high four-star slash five-star linebacker. Goes to a very prestigious school down in the Louisiana area. I could see Notre Dame landing him, but I will have to say LSU leads at this point just because his father played there and his father works there. But some kids want to blaze their own trail. And I could very well see that happening. Um, distance yourself from the family. Some kids are all about that. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'll, I'll go to the two offensive linemen that really stood out, Chase Basantis and Joshua Padilla. Trevor Luwak from Indiana, I was hoping he would get an offer. I don't think he did. Um, he is an offensive guard from the Indianapolis area. He is an Notre Dame legacy, and I do think he could pick up an offer this fall, but we'll just have to wait and see. But back to Pesantis and Padilla. Padilla, I think, will end up at Ohio State. He goes to Hoover Heights High School, just like Emil Wagner. Um, and he has been offered by Ohio State. I think he went there for an unofficial visit June 2nd. Super talented kid. It's going to come down to Notre Dame and Ohio State, though. But I do think Ohio State ends up with him. Super early, though. We'll see what happens. Pesantis, Penn State is offered. I believe Ohio State offered as well. But I do think Notre Dame leads here. He goes to Don Bosco Prep Powerhouse High School in the Jersey area. Um, I'm a huge fan of Pesantis. I think he could end up a five-star or a high four-star. He's ranked a four-star right now. Love this kid. Jeff Quinn loves him. He loves Notre Dame. I could see this coming together. I'll go to some wide receivers in the 2023 class. Carnell Tate um, was in attendance. He did not play. Uh, he just went for an unofficial visit. But, boy, I could see Carnell Tate being the next great Notre Dame wide receiver. It's going to be a battle, though. Ohio State, I think, is Notre Dame's main foe for Tate's services. Boy, 
Brian Harlan and company are, is hard to beat, but Carnell Tate, he really he really likes the idea of his family being able to come see all of his games. Chicago to South Bend's about a two hour trip, give or take. Columbus to Chicago is probably another three, four, five hours. So that that's got to help Notre Dame at least some bit. Uh, super good prospect there. Christian Gray is a corner from Dissimet High School down in St. Louis. I'm nearly certain that uh, Jordan Johnson, former Notre Dame wide receiver, played there, but tell me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm super certain on that, though. Um, but Christian Gray is one talented player. Boy, Ohio State offer, um, Arizona State offer, I think. Just really going to shoot up the boards. He's ranked just a four-star right now, but I could see him really getting up there into the top 100 or top 150. We're in a sub 4 five forty. Um, as a sophomore in high school. So that's pretty crazy. Definitely got to know they're on the DB board for 2023. Jack Luttrell was a guy um, who I think the, the staff liked, but uh, they, they want to see his junior tape, as I think they want to see all these guys' junior tape. I'm not really that high on any of these guys being takes right now, other than maybe Drake Bowen and Carnell Tate, just on the fact they've played two years of high school ball. Some of them even won without this COVID year. So you got to give them some time in a real high school setting. Our tight end target 23 goes to D. Smith, too. Yes, you are right. He's referring to Mac Markway, um, who is from the St. Louis area and is going to D. Smith High School. He is a massive target. And he's a guy that Notre Dame would also accept a commitment from, as would Ohio State and all those schools that have offered him. He will be probably a top 75 player when it's all said and done. But back to, back to, uh, to Jack Luttrell. Um, was was that an unofficial visit at Georgia today? He's going to pick up some big offers, but I think when it all comes um, into fruition, I could see him ending up in South Bend. Met up with Tom Loy, Matt Freeman. I really think he likes South Bend, and I think he could end up in this class. He's definitely one of the more likely ones, too, at least. And finally, um, Vernon, Brian Vernon, I believe his name is Ryan Vernon. I haven't, I haven't heard much about him. I thought he was an Ohio State lock, but um, he did indeed camp at Notre Dame yesterday. I was a little surprised to see that. Heard good things. It, it looked like he's an absolute freak. This kid is, I believe, some 6'5 plus, 220 plus. Um, I think he can play weak or strong side defensive end. Is from Ohio. Um, values academic, so you got to like that. Likes Mike Elson, as all these guys do. Um, Jaden Osborne, or not Jaden Osborne, who is the defensive end? There's another defensive end that is completely blowing my right now. Kenny McDonald, defensive end from Texas. Sorry, I'm just blanking on the names right now. These are 2023 guys. I'm not as locked in with those guys. He absolutely loved Mike Elson as well. Mike Elson has been in Notre Dame for a long, long time. So he's there for a reason. He's there to recruit, and Vernon loves him. Um, I think Elson won us a ton of battles, and I think Elson single-handedly could win guys like Cyrus Moss and Anthony Lucas in this cycle. He pretty much got Tyson Ford in the fold by himself. Um, and he's won some huge recruits. Gabriel Rubio back last cycle in the 2021 class. He's just one hell of a recruiter. Um, and I think he can land these big time guys. That's the video. Thank you guys for watching. I will make probably another video on the Irish invasion camp either tomorrow or the day after just talking more in depth about it. Thank you guys for always liking and subscribing as well. Comment. I will respond to your comments if you have them. And that is it for